this is a quick kind of overview of goal programming. In this example, we're saying that the Orem City Library has to decide how to use its budgets given their constraints and the goals for the year. So in this example, we have that uh, we have this information here about the different book genres they're considering purchases in, the price, the readers per month of each age group, and the events that they might put on, the cost per event, and each age group served, how many people in each age group. Um, their budget, the number of adults they'd like to serve, the children they'd like to serve, the teens they'd like to serve, um, the preferred minimum events per month, and the preferred minimum books purchased. So their goals are fourfold. Stay under budget, serve all the people in the community, provide at least five events per month, and increase the book collection by at least a thousand books. And that's all reflected in these constraints. Uh, well, not constraints, but these values here. So in a goal programming model, you have your um, the numbers of things you're going to choose um, here we have the number of books purchased in each genre and the number of library events planned in for each type. And then with goal programming, we want to allow some leeway in whether or not they can, um, they, well, allow some leeway in how they reach their goals. Um, and so what we do to kind of allow for that is we have over and under values that the um, that Excel chooses, that the solver chooses, and we constrain those so that um, when we take the actual number, which is this, so in this case we have number of adults served, which is this nice formula here, which is basically just the number of each type of book times the number of adults um, served by those types of books plus the number of each event times the number of adults served for that type of event. Um, that's just what this formula is here. And so then we just say, well, that's the actual number. And then we have um, a number here that we're going to keep equal to our actual constraint um, and we'll allow it to go over and under and this value here is just the amount the actual amount minus the amount that we go over plus the amount that we go under which should oops, should just end up equaling the the value well we're going to constrain that to be equal to whatever value we need it to be. In this case, we, we need to serve 2,000 adults. And then to allow Excel to choose numbers for these and numbers that, that result in, in values here that get near to the goal but not exactly to the goal, um, we allow it to deviate. This percent deviation section is just a calculation of the actual amount over, in this over deviation, the over divided by the actual value, um, and then, <clears throat> sorry, the, by the goal value. Then So the amount over divided by the goal, um, not the goal, but the constraint here, and the value under divided by the constraint. That's what all of these are across here. It's the same formula. Um, just like these up here, we're all the amount, the actual amount minus the over amount plus the under amount. That's what all of these are here. So then we just use weights when we do each goal because we have to solve for each goal in order. Uh, we're going to go from goal one to goal four. And we're going to tell Excel, hey, I want you to make this deviation important. I want you to care about this deviation. And in this case, this stay under budget goal. 
um, we're saying, well, we really don't want you to go over budget. So we're saying we care about this value. And the reason this actually makes a difference is because the value we're trying to minimize is it's the percent deviation times the weight plus the percent deviation times the weight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's the sum product of the deviations and the weights. So in this case, we're saying, well, solve this model so that we constrain these values here to be equal and we minimize this sum product in this case such that the only thing we really care about to minimize is the amount that we go over. So it's going to try to find a place where these are equal um, and still stay under budget. So let's just set up solver. So again, here's that uh, the, minute, the goal here, the objective, we're going to minimize it. That's what it's called, the objective function. Um, and we're going to change the variable cells. In this case, the variable cells are all of these orange cells, and I've already selected them, but it's these cells that we're choosing here, plus all the over and under cells. And then um, since the number of books purchased, the number of library events, those are all integers. We put integer constraints on those values. So that's what these two bits are here. And then the, this is the constraint for all of these. Now, just because this particular model has these constraints doesn't mean you can't add additional constraints that aren't dependent on the over and under, that aren't related to the goals. You could have hard um, constraints that say, well, like if we didn't a lot, we had to use exactly a certain amount of money, then we could change, like the goal, this wouldn't have to be a goal, it could be um, a constraint that we'd have to abide by. But in this case, it's a goal, it's not a hard constraint. So um, we're just letting it be that way. So let's just solve this. And don't really pay attention to the numbers that I'm getting here because I didn't find a pretty model. I just kind of threw one together that sounded interesting. So a solver's trying to find something that works, and eventually it will. And so what we do now, so this is the solution for goal one. Now we have to duplicate this tab, create a copy, and then in this copy we take this value here that we cared about, the total budget used, and we're going to make it a new constraint. So we're going to paste special values and we're going to make the constraint over here that is just the val the actual value and we're going to say that these have to be equal. So this is our um, I'm going to copy the formatting here. That's our this is our constraint. Okay, special formats. Okay, so now we're going to move on to goal two. So goal two says serve all the people in the community. So now we can go ahead and set this weight to zero because we we now have a constraint that says we're going to use exactly this amount of budget because that's what we solved for. So now we're going to say, okay, well, we need to serve, we prefer to serve all the people in the community. So we don't want to go under. So we'll use weights to penalize going under. So we need to make sure we serve all the adults, all the teens, and all the children. So we just put ones in the under category. So then we go ahead and go to solver again. Um, all our previous stuff is there. We just need to add the new constraint that we got from our last solution. Just set those to be equal. Go OK. And let's solve again. And we, we're good. So now, again, we just move on to the next one. And I'm going to say goal one, goal two, this is goal 
3. So in goal 3, now we solve these three values. So we're just going to cut, we're going to add these as constraints. So again, paste special values, paste special values, and paste special values. Let's make those equal and set these to the actual values here. And let's copy this formatting down, fill formatting only. So now we have the next goal. So goal three says provide at least five events per month. So we don't care if we have more than a certain number of events. We just have to have, um, we just don't want to go under. So we'll penalize going under for the total events per month. So we're going to say one there. And looking at this, it looks like it's already solved. So we're going to go ahead and uh, let solver solve this, but I think it's already solved. So we're going to go ahead and add these constraints here. So now we have our integer constraints, our constraints for these qualities here, and then our constraints for the different goals we've solved for. Crap. And this is supposed to be simplex. So <laughs> these numbers are not pretty numbers. So just, just ignore the numbers. Pay attention to the process I'm following. I believe it is supposed to be simplex LP. Double check me on that. Um, so then we just move our copy for the final goal. Create a copy. Um, we'll call this goal four. And we'll, of course, add our new constraint. Pay special values. Make this the value of that cell. Just put an equal sign there. Copy the formatting. And then solve again. And we just add that last constraint for, for goal three that we solved for. And we click OK. Oh, before we solve, we forgot one thing. We have to update the weights. So in this case, we want to increase the book collection by at least a thousand books. Well, <laughs> these numbers, we've already done that, but just so you can see, in this case, we'd set that to one, and we'd go to solver, and we already set up the constraints. So we'll just click solve, and then this is our solution. And you'll notice with this particular model, it didn't really change after we kind of got our first solution. And the other thing to point out here is there could be multiple solutions that meet these goals. This is just happens to be the one that Solver found. I don't know if Solver will always find this same solution. I don't know how that works. Something to find out. Anyway, I hope this helps. And there you have it.